Hello everyone, Canon Loey here, back after I beat the game completely for the second time to unlock the archives, and I had to play the game over again because my first save file wouldn't load chapter 5, so I needed to play chapters 1 through 5 again uh, completely, and I did show in hopefully my previous part uh, quite a bit of secrets that, granted I used the wiki to find out how to get to them and everything, but I wanted to show them. So, now we get to see what the archives are. Welcome to the archives. Bendy and the Ink Machine began when the developer slash cartoonish known as the Meatly experimented with bringing a sketched 2D style into a 3D world. After turning the idea into a horror game, chapter one of the game was created in little under a week with pro with programmer slash friend Mike Mood and released on February 10th in 2017. Much to their surprise, it struck a chord with the global indie gamers among almost overnight. The Meatly and Mike Mood decided to drop all other prog all other projects to work on Bendy and tell the most unique ink story. The entire game was completed a chapter at a time in a year and a half by a small but dedicated group of indie developers. Although the concept and story remained as originally intended, the game changed over development as characters and models were refined through their early through their early thrown together versions. This archive is a sneak peek behind the scenes at that process. Well, that's cool. Also, what was... Oh, uh, whatever I had in my mind, I just lost it. Well, let, let's, let's take a look at what we got. Concept Bendy, um... No, no, that's pretty, pretty freaky. <laughs> Is that like more of a female version of Bendy? It's kind of the vibes I've been getting from that. Concept Bendy. This is the first Bendy of, uh, version of Bendy ever modeled. In the earliest concepts, Bendy was much smaller and cuter, with a face that split open to reveal a terrifying mouth. Huh. Yeah, just imagine, like, literally Bendy chasing you. The cute version of Bendy. <laughs> Alpha Bendy. This is the original game used design of Ink Bendy from the earliest version of Chapter 1. It is jokingly referred to as bird poop with a smile among the development team. Well, I could kind of see that. And then there's Beast Bendy right there. Beta Bendy. This was Ink Bendy's form until the release of Chapter 4. At that time, the game received a major visual upgrade, and the title character got a new model as well. So yeah, this is what Bendy looked like before Chapter 4. And as you can see here, his stomach midsection area is a whole lot lot more formed like as we can see here the the model that is used now you can see here that he has like his rib cage kind of popping out here and he's a lot skinnier down there and also it almost and his legs also look skinnier as well so I really think that this bendy is more intimidating for me personally but this Bendy looks cool as well. So let's see what they say for Ink Bendy. Ink Bendy, as we know him today, although similar to Beta Bendy, this upgraded version has been remodeled, enhanced with a higher polygon count, and given new ink effects. Yeah, as you can see here, it is a lot more detailed. Yeah, I guess they didn't even have a body for him, or enough of one. <laughs> Beast Bendy. 
Ink Bendy's horrific final form in Chapter 5 pulled away the cartoon fas uh, facade and revealed the demon within. I did like the design of Beast Bendy. The only thing that I would have personally liked is if his legs were enlarged too so that he would run on his legs instead of his arms. It, having it being that much of a difference and also him just all of a sudden using his arms to run I don't know it just seemed it just seemed weird to me but I still like the look oh and there's a, an ocean of giant hand giant cartoon hands Sammy Lawrence Piper Striker uh, beta searcher early in development with a few weeks to create chapter 2 the beta searchers were designed in rec in r record time before fully being retooled later on. They were the first fighting enemies encountered in the game. Well, that's true. Honestly, they don't really look that much different than the current ones. Okay, let's look at the final searcher. The final searcher were far more robust in appearance. They were smoother with a better ink effects and a more human appearance. Yeah, I would definitely say the ink effects were much better with them, but... I mean, they're not super different. Beta Sammy. As you can see in Beta Sammy, he doesn't even have boots on. Or they're under his coveralls. With his first appearance in Chapter 2, fan favorite Sammy Lawrence became a terrifying, entertaining character. When his slim build was deemed not threatening enough he was redesigned and given a better skeletal rig for most or for more advanced animation um I don't know I mean he seems fine for me personally I mean in chapter 2 he wasn't even an enemy really or at least you couldn't fight him. I mean, the mini boss in Chapter 5 was more about that. I don't know. For some reason, I kind of liked when I watched the older chapters where he would just kind of like slide on the floor to walk rather than actually having boots. But I mean, those abs, man. That muscular bod. Final Sammy's got got some muscle. Sammy Lawrence's final form came complete with a bulked up uh, stature and more powerful limbs. The mad songwriter may finally get noticed now, at least by fans. That's great. Notice me, Bendy. And then here's the lost ones, which I guess they didn't even have anything to say about these characters for some reason? Why does that Alice Angel have an apron on? But yeah, you can definitely see the differences there between the two. I do kind of wish that we actually if we had the opportunity to actually fight Alice Angel as an enemy, I, I think that would have been cool. Because they brought back Sammy Lawrence, which he seemingly was under the influence of Bendy's Ink or something. Uh, I think it would have been cool if we saw uh, this Alice Angel wielding the axe like she was, I think, in the Chapter 4 reveal trailer or something it showed out uh, uh, this Alice Angel wielding an axe and kind of walking around the studio it would have been cool if we were able to uh, fight her at some point but I guess that won't happen also this the the new Alice looks like she has she's dirtier <laughs> I guess well, this one's obsessed with beauty, so I guess that kind of makes sense. Uh, let's look at the Butcher Gang. The Piper, Striker, and Fisher made up the 
Dreaded Butcher Gang. Interestingly, the ink corrupted versions of the characters were designed first and then were reversed engineered back into a more friendly, family friendly cartoon forms? Oh, oh, okay, I get it. So basically, he made the monster versions first and then just reconstructed them into their actual cartoon forms and posters and stuff. That's really interesting, because, yeah, I would admit that it probably would have been the other way around. There's uh, Bertram. The ink machine. Oh, the original ink machine. Before a major visual update, this version of the ink machine was the one used in the game. Much of this machine's iconic fan love design was translated into the final version. So yeah, basically the final version of the ink machine is just a bigger version of it with pipes coming all over it. So let's go over here. Beta... Oh... Okay, Beta Boris. Papa was the original name of the character that eventually became Boris the Wolf. This early version was released with Chapter 1. He was quickly refined in the Boris we know today with the re release of Chapter 2. Honestly, I would have probably been w <laughs> way more disturbed by this model of Boris with that, with the entire ribcage and midsection being like that rather than the Boris we saw in chapter one so Boris the Wolf Boris the Wolf a friend to the end was designed using references from cartoons from the 1920s a blend of West Coast and early oh West Coast and East Coast animation styles this silent and supportive wolf won over the hearts of many Although at times he was a headache for the development team due to his AI taking the mind of its <laughs> of its own during production. Huh. Yeah, I, I, I think I know what they mean. And look at that, those projectors. I think Bendy... That's what Bendy was using the projectionists for. <laughs> okay. Uh, Brute Boris. Alice Angel's monstrosity, Brute Boris, was one of the biggest surprises of Chapter 4. His design was roughly based on the Frankenstein monster, but with with a more unfinished appearance. Alice took parts from within him and subs substituted things that his body is rapidly rejecting. Oh, okay, I, I think I get what they mean. So basically... His new body, like what she did with him, like the insides, that's why he would bleed out every time that he attacked or something, because, well, his body was rejecting it, so that's interesting. Did I go over everything? I think I might have. So yeah, those long-time fans of this game who've been with it since either chapter 1 or 2, especially with seeing like the beta versions of these characters, must have been a really good blast to the past. But what I would have liked to see is is this version of Bendy in the somewhere in the game. Or at least like you know, the smaller, more cartoonish, or quote-unquote cute version of this Bendy and making him an enemy, because having his face do that, it, that, that that's creepy. <laughs> oh, there we go. Bendy and the ink machine on the roof. So yeah, I think that's pretty much or at least from the look of it, all that the Archives has to offer. I really like how they show the beta versions of each of the characters too to see how they were changed, you know. 
like Sammy Lawrence becoming taller, more muscular version with uh, boots that time. And then the different versions of Bendy especially. I mean, I don't know if any of us would have known this was the first concept of Bendy without being here. And then also seeing the the different versions of upgrades Bendy has had. And they don't even say anything about Bertram. Honestly, I think they w would have at least had a plaque on his design, his boss design, but I guess not. His head is just there. It's a trophy to the ink machine, I guess. And we get a slightly closer look version, a closer look at the Butcher Gang. Ironically enough, I think the the monkey, I, I forget what, I think his name is Piper? The, the, this guy, the, the, the monkey or chimp? He's probably the least scary for me personally compared to the other two. I think I probably find Fisher to be the most disturbing with the fishing rod being with his head and everything. And Piper with his mouth being on his head instead of where it should be. <laughs> and, and that music, that music is great. So yeah, I think this is pretty much it for Bendy and the Ink Machine, uh, unless... Oh, here we go, Henry Stein. I almost missed it. Once an equal business partner of Joey Drew, Henry Stein ha was a talented animator and creator designer until leaving the company around 1930. His place in Joy Drew's studio history is somewhat undocumented, but... He is rumored to be the true creator behind many of the studio's most memorable characters. Oh, that's cool. I'm guessing this has nothing behind it. I think they probably should should have had a place for bacon soup. I mean, come on. No bacon soup in the archives? Forgetting bacon soup? But yeah, I think this pretty much is is it for the archives uh, unless I missed something. So yeah, I uh, am I am I going to go through the chapters again to look th with the seeing tool to see all the secret stuff? Probably not. I mean, I'll probably just leave that to the professionals. So yeah, this is pretty much the end of Bendy and the Machine. I'm really glad that they added the archives and seeing, you know, the old versions of the, the different characters. Uh, like I said, especially the the Bendy <laughs> concept and Alpha Bendy and everything. That, that's cool. So I yeah, this is this is where I'm gonna call it now. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you the Meat Lee for adding this and and his development team. I think they go under Kindly Beast now. I think his video said Kindly Beast. Hopefully I got that right. Um, so thank you for adding this L little bit of Bendy history and seeing all the characters up close like this without being threatened by them like the Butcher Gang and, and Bendy. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and as far as, uh, unless I decide otherwise, this is the end for Bendy and the Ink Machine unless something new comes out for it. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day.